We have with us Phyllis Sonner, who joined the church in 1950. Right. So you came when we came to the new church. Yes, we were meeting in the basement when, we, when I first came. And I think it was the, probably the next year where they had the dedication in the church. I was baptized and confirmed a Lutheran in a little church in Beaver, Pennsylvania. Ray had belonged to the Christian church in Strasburg. He was glad to join the Lutheran church with me and became active also in the church. I've done a lot of things in church. I taught the little children for a while in Sunday school, and I've been I've done the lessons. I've read the lessons. I've and, until COVID, I was counting money every week. I helped Katie Ray years ago mm -hmm. when we were the women were doing that for the Diamond Jubilee, and. I remember asking Katie, Katie, when we're this age, will the ladies do this for us? And they have. First of all, the church has been a second home for me all these years. And I don't know what life could be like without it. It was here that I met my husband, also a Lutheran. We became members of Uhlenberg in 1968, and both of our children were born and raised here in the valley and took part in the youth programs at Muhlenberg. I have served on almost every committee that is available but one of the first ones was to be a parent to a college student at Madison College. And that person happened to be Mary Elizabeth Skinner, for which I am grateful to know. Can you think of any funny stories of events that happened that come to your mind that give you a quiet laugh <laughs> about things that happened at the church? This part will need to be cut out. <laughs> <laughs> You're not telling I'm tales. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Muhlenberg is, is my home. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's where I come to church every Sunday, but it's also, it's my family. Um, I'm one of five kids, but they've all, all the rest of them have moved away. My mom's still here local, but Muhlenberg is my family. I think back sometimes of all the people that were here when I was a kid. Um, most of them are not here anymore, but some of them still are. Just all the people that I enjoyed being around. Figuring out later on that people were actually mentoring me, maybe sometimes even to when I wasn't aware that they were doing it, but I look back now and say, oh yeah, they, they were my mentor. So. Part of the reason we came back to Muhlenberg, I don't know if you're familiar with the song, Little Jimmy Brown, yes. where he was married and yes. buried and in the church. And um, we just felt that that was the right place to be for the rest of our lives. You, you asked for a story about Muhlenberg at the time uh, the, uh, when our daughter was born, her lungs didn't open. And the pediatrician came to me and said, I know you're Lutheran, uh, you might have her baptized. And so I got in touch with Dixon Taylor and he came out in the middle of the night, gowned up and went into the incubator place and baptized Katrin. By morning her lungs opened up. And you asked for a Muhlenberg story, and I think of that as a meaningful one that says, 
uh, I am blessed and in in God's hands. We went through several college organists who was not familiar with liturgical things and appropriate things to play for this, that, and the other, and it got sort of, I finally said, I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> At least I think the value of choosing music to fit the season and the Sundays and to realize you're not entertaining the congregation. All of this was as Bach said, to the glory of God. Not just Muhlenberg Lutheran in general, their emphasis on God's grace is just, you know, marvelous. Grace and love and forgiveness and stuff is so apparent here. I and want to hear the story about the bat funeral. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would be an extra charge. He came home that night and he told me, he said that he found a bat in the church. And I said, well, what did you do with it? He said, he took it up to the cemetery and buried it. And I said, you better be glad the police didn't come by checking you out. <laughs> hey, I mean, what do you do? <laughs> I mean, you're right next door to the, to the cemetery. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what did you expect me to do? I mean, and I, I gave it a decent burial. You said a little prayer? Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> we had a service, okay? You and the bat had a service? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the bat was... <laughs> <laughs> the bat was no longer with us. <laughs> the bat was with God. You don't feel like you have to be judged here. You can, you're just accepted for who you are, and that's just a great feeling. There's a lot of compassion here. There always has been. Um, even though, like, sermons have changed over the years, and, you know, and it's still here. There's still love here. It's a community. It's full of families, and kids love it. Um, you know, I, I would just encourage people to just try it, come here, and just enjoy worship, enjoy, like, the extracurricular things that you can get involved in with your families. So, yeah. My kids have said it all. Yeah. yeah. They said it all. Maybe. I remember I had to hold my mother's hand in order to go up the back steps because she wouldn't let me go up and down by myself. <laughs> yeah. When the organ came in, Dad was here. <laughs> he wanted to see every little screw and bolt and, and everything that went associated with that, uh, putting those pipes in up there. He, he used to work for Miles Music Company downtown. His joy, his most beautiful joy was that he was able to uh, play the organ when it was first put in. Muhlenberg has always been a church of, of uh, caring about people. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's a place around here anywhere that doesn't want to care for the people uh, that come here. I felt connection immediately the first time I came and actually stood next to my brother um, during a worship service and something got made him laugh and our shoulders were just bouncing. But coming in the doors, there was a, a weight and a life renewed and restored. The weight of whatever struggles I was having really felt um, lifted. How the stories are told maybe change, but the importance of telling the stories of why we're there, who we each are, um, yeah, that has that constant has always remained the same, which helps create the safety, mm -hmm. and that everyone's story is welcome, and everyone is welcome to tell their story within this space, no matter how that you know how that story is told or what that story includes. I'm not in my faith loudly all the time. But I own my faith and it consumes me. It's the footsteps, it's the songs, it's the, mm, sorry, warmth and acceptance and comfort I got when Hawk was born. And 
this space that I didn't I don't want to leave. The most important thing with me with Muhlenberg is no matter what is going on between the people in the congregation because I have been here long enough I know that something good almost always comes out of it. We've always left it up to the congregation to make the decisions and that's not always true in other churches. You have you know leaders in the church that are this is what we'll do whether you like it or not. Others who just let it devolve into chaos. That's never happened here. I grew up in California, which is very different from Virginia. Mm -hmm. And to be dropped in the middle of a southern town <laughs> with southern people who at that time wore hats and gloves to church, which, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it was a very different place, but they accepted me. I, I just like the people. Well, I've always loved sewing because I actually, my first career was as a home ec teacher way, way back. And so I have sewn for a long, long time and, and just found out that this was a good way to kind of, after retirement, do you know, something good for other folks. And I joined to be with her. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I joined because it was a great group to be with, and uh, they obviously had a lot of fun. They were well established, they do great things. And what I felt from most of these people, all of these people, is it's just a family tie. You know, these ladies know each other's families, and children, and pets, and husbands, and wives. Um, but that kind of belonging, you know, it just, it's a nice, uh, it's a yeah. nice thing. Well, I moved here on a Friday, and on that Sunday I came here, and I was stymied by these doors, and I thought, where do you go into this church? <laughs> but then two nice people were walking right ahead of me, and it happened to be Tom and Dale Pettit, and I said, hello, and I told them my name, and I said, I'm, I'm just moved here, and I'm just wanting to you know, find a church, and so could you explain to me how you get in here, and they showed me, and, and the, the greeters were very welcoming, and after I left that day, I thought, well, instead of going around to lots of different churches, I think I'm just going to keep going here until I either like it or I don't like it, and you know the answer to that because I never left. <laughs> and then in 2011, uh, here, and once you're in here and you look at the posies, the flowers, the posies, it's like, oh my dear, I would really like to, to do the Flower Guild. So I asked and uh, Pastor Dave gave me permission to do that. So I still am trying to work with that. You know, I do it because I love it. It's not a job. It really is not a job. I love the service. I think, I think the whole service is just beautiful. The music, the everything, yes. So, yes, when I come to church, I leave knowing I've been to church. I've heard God's word, yes. Uh, well, we had uh, what we called Wham when Pastor Joe was here. Uh, he wanted a, a Wham, which he, it was the Wednesday at Muhlenberg and we would fix uh, prepare meals from scratch and uh, people would come in and we would have a hundred or maybe more at Thanksgiving when we had the full course meal. I mean, they just flocked in here at $4 a person. The people that helped us in the kitchen, uh, you wouldn't believe how we got along and they always, always wanted to help and do things. And that, a lot of those with the different services that they went to, it got us to know everybody. And they would call you up, do you need help tonight? And that was a great, it was a great thing, it really was. Um, I know that you come to the 8 or 8.30 service now. Yeah. Um, and that seems to be your service of preference. Yeah, for years, well, we had about five or six uh, families sit there together. 
Everybody yeah. knew where they sat. You yeah. Know? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. It's a good congregation. It is, and it's a closeness. There's a closeness there. If you miss, you wonder where so-and-so is. And a lot of times you get a phone call and what, what happened Sunday, especially if you're a regular member and come every Sunday, they want to know where you are. And it's been a very close-knit situation. The friendships that uh, I have made have lasted throughout my life. And uh, I guess those people have the same standards as I do. That's what brings us together. Our love of the church, our love of God. They, it's it's my, my family, my second family for sure. And I thank you so much for joining us well, today. I've, I've enjoyed it. Good. Thank you. Oh, are we cut off?